pictured or excavations in progress at the Coster site in Illinois. The Coster site represents occupation during the cultural period known as the Archaic. At the time of these excavations, Coster represented one of the more innovative digs in North America, including the use of conveyor belts to carry the sediment out of the excavation grids to be screened at ground level. The complex stratigraphic deposits contain cultural occupation levels that span the entire archaic traditions of early, middle, and late, dating 7,500 years before present to 1,500 years before present. Archaeologists obtain dates through a technique that uses carbon-14, a radioactive element of carbon. With the creation of the stating technique in 1950, archaeology had a powerful new tool for placing archaeological sites in a time and space perspective. The cultural period known as the Archaic follows the Paleo-Indian period. People continued to live a nomadic lifeway, moving around throughout the year. Groups hunted smaller game animals and collected wild plants. In the Northern Plains, the Archaic Cultural Period begins at approximately 7,500 years before present and continues until about 1,500 years before present. As in the preceding Paleo-Indian period, the most diagnostic artifacts are the projectile points that the Archaic peoples created. These projectile points were used with the atlatl or spear thrower. In the Northern Plains, the current chronology for the Archaic Lifeway is divided into early, middle, and late stages. People who practiced the Archaic Lifeway had a keen knowledge of the plants and animals that populated their lands. They hunted and collected these resources as their food base. Various Archaic groups practiced different forms of disposing of the dead. Archaeologists call some archaic burials primary, while others are called secondary. The secondary burials involved allowing the deceased body to decompose above ground and then burying the remains in what is known as a secondary burial. Cremation of the deceased was also practiced by some groups. While archaic peoples practiced a lifeway that was nomadic, relocating during the year, there is direct evidence for the creation of pit houses and storage chambers, tying them at least temporarily to a specific point on the landscape. One of the hallmarks of the archaic period was the introduction of projectile points that were notched or stemmed, narrowed at the base. The size and weight of the points was also reduced to be utilized with atlatl darts. The archaic toolkits contained a broad range of ground stone tools, especially for grinding and processing seeds and woodworking. As indicated in previous slides, the atlatl or spear thrower was a specialized tool for propelling the darts in hunting. During the archaic period, various types of grinding stones appear, indicating new forms of food preparation for example, grinding seeds and roots to create flour. Archaic peoples also ground the bones of small animals into a paste, mixed the paste with ground seeds, and then baked the highly nutritious mixture. The atlatl provided a method of propelling the darts both faster and more accurately, while also giving much greater penetration power to the dart. The hunter is basically pushing the dart or projectile through the air at the target. Across the New World, the Archaic Lifeway spanned approximately 7,000 years plus in time and laid the base for what would eventually emerge as a more settled lifeway with semi-permanent horticultural villages. In a developing understanding of Archaic peoples, it is important to realize that they adapted to a tremendous range of changing climates and landscapes which directly affected their lifeways. Some of the most challenging regions inhabited by peoples of the Archaic culture were in the Northern Plains and the Rocky Mountains. Harsh, rapidly changing climates, including periods of severe heat and cold, as well as drought, 
impacted the groups as they migrated seasonally across the various landscapes. Differing environments existed to the east and the southeast of the plains. This is reflected in the settlements of cultural groups located along the drainage of the Mississippi River. These eastern archaic cultures developed earlier forms of social stratification, indicating to archaeologists more complex societies. During the archaic, huge herds of bison evolved across the plains of North America. The techniques of hunting bison became extraordinarily sophisticated. Hunters killed both individual animals and bison herds. The strategies used for hunting bison during the Archaic reflect thousands of years of hunters honing their skills and adapting to the landscape. In fact, the landscape or terrain itself became part of the hunting technology. A keen understanding of bison behavior was critical in evolving these hunting strategies. The Canadian site of Head Smashed In is a perfect example of humans utilizing a series of complex landforms to create a hunting mechanism that was reused over a period of hundreds of generations. Head Smashed In is a World Heritage Site. Archaic hunters undertook complex preparations to achieve success in using the Head Smashed In landform as part of the hunting strategy. Preparing for these hunts or bison jumps likely took weeks with every element of climate, temperature, herd position, and human readiness in place. Human knowledge was passed from generation to generation as groups continued to use the site for several thousand years. As various types of sites are investigated, archaeologists begin to gain insights into the complex lifeways of prehistoric cultural groups. Campsites provide insights into the day-to-day -day activities that members of a particular group carried out from one season of the year to the next. Kill sites inform us about one of the aspects of hunting strategies. Human burials indicate the way in which the dead were ritually treated. A composite picture begins to emerge regarding the adaptations of these different groups across time and space. Two important archaic sites in the northwestern plains are located in Wyoming. The Helen Lookingbill site and the type site of the McKeon culture provide critical insights into the archaic lifeway. The archaic is divided into early, middle, and late time periods. These divisions allow investigators to identify and more accurately describe cultural changes and adaptations that were occurring. As climate changed over several thousand years, human groups were forced to make adaptive changes and adjustments to specific landscapes in response to these environmental circumstances. An area in the southern Black Hills of South Dakota likely served as a refuge during several environmental cycles of warming and drying that occurred during the Middle and Late Archaic. During periods of drought, people were pushed off the plains and into regions where water and food were available. These zones on the landscape contained freshwater springs that supported plants and animals, and in turn, human groups. At various times during a several thousand year period, these areas served as a refuge for humans. The archaeological record is represented by small camps with hearths that reflect different cooking techniques being employed by the archaic hunters and gatherers. One can imagine that these restricted areas that had good water, plants, and animals were an oasis for the human groups. Archaeological investigations reveal a complexity of cooking techniques as well as a changing dietary focus during several thousand years of use of this specialized landscape. These shallow basin-style hearths provided warmth during the cooler seasons of the year. The landscape also offered shelter for the prehistoric group. This picture shows how this site type looks following excavation. Hearths are cross-sectioned during excavation to provide documentation of both the horizontal and vertical dimensions. Photographs are taken and plans are drawn to achieve maximum documentation. The design of deep basin pits involved building up multiple layers of hot rocks, 
interspersing packets of meat and plants, adding more hot rocks, and then sealing the pit with earth. A baking oven is created that it can achieve results similar to baking meat and vegetables in a modern oven. Note the red-orange color at the base of the oven. This indicates that considerable heat baked the earthen base and caused the iron minerals in the soil to intensify, thus shifting the color of the deposit to a red-orange. The heat radiated within such a feature provided excellent conditions for baking meat and plants. Excavation of a deep basin oven feature. Note the rocks on the edge of the excavation unit that have been removed as the excavation proceeded. These archaeological features had a specialized function to allow the production of bone grease. Bone grease was extracted by crushing the bone elements of an animal and then boiling this crushed bone to render and extract the grease. When the grease floated to the surface of the boiling water, it was skimmed off and added to dried meat to produce a very nutritious food today known as pemmican. One pit contained a high animal skin liner which held water. The water was brought to a boil by lifting hot rocks from an adjoining fire pit into the liquid. When enough hot rocks were added to bring the water to a boil, the fresh crushed bone was added and the resulting bone grease was skimmed off. Examples of a stone boiling complex. The deeper pits on the right in the photo served to heat rock, which was then lifted into the high line pit on the left to extract bone grease. Some of the hearths investigated were very shallow. Sometimes the fires were ignited without any pit being dug. These were used for brief cooking and warming situations. The various firecraft rock or FCR features spanned over a thousand years of time and represented different adaptations and uses by archaic groups in the Southern Black Hills archaeological zone. One of the analytical techniques available to archaeologists today is the study of residues. In the case of some of the excavated hearths, it was possible to extract residue from specimens of firecracked rock to determine some of the plants and animals that were cooked by the prehistoric inhabitants. Macroscopic and microscopic analysis of plant and animal residues from these prehistoric hearths coupled with radiocarbon dates enabled archaeologists to study the changing diets of the archaic people who utilized this area of the southern Black Hills over multiple generations. The presence or absence of certain plants and animals tells us not only about changing diets, but also about the changes in climate to which human groups had to constantly adapt. Archaic peoples practice a nomadic lifeway. They moved over a vast landscape, traveling across several hundred square miles in a 12-month cycle. The analysis of the remains of their small camps and hearths provides an understanding of which environments were utilized during the changing seasons of the year. The archaic people possessed a deep time knowledge of which plants and what animals would be available in the different regions that were their home territory. Archaeology is an interdisciplinary field of study. Specialists from the fields of chemistry, biology, botany, zoology, geomorphology, and physics contributed to the study of the archaic hearth features in the southern Black Hills. When cooperating scientists bring their specialized analyses to a research project, the resulting insights are greatly enhanced. As the various artifacts and sites that we have considered in this presentation demonstrate, Understanding how human groups of the distant past lived and adapted to their environments greatly enriches our understanding of ourselves and the complexity of human culture.